Hello, everyone. On today's episode of the Player Spotlight series, we've got a. This is a favourite of ours, Dan and I. We, we didn't put him first because we didn't want to look, make it look like we were biased. But, mate, fuck Coggy. It is all about Tim Taranto, my friend. To, to be fair, if you were asking me who I really want in a dream world, I'd throw up all the other players we'll go through this year and just say Taranto. This guy is a superstar and he's a baby in the age bracket. He is everything that I think Carlton Football Club want and need. And look at him. He looks like a Carlton player. You can see that guy in a navy blue Guernsey after training, getting a macchiato down at, down Ligon, can't you? He looks like it. <laughs> he definitely looks like a Carlton boy, I won't lie. It's the, uh, and it's probably something we need. We need a bit of an Italiano in the side, mate. You know, we need, we've had a Carazzo, I think, ever since then. We haven't really had one. He, he, he looks like the kind of boy that can tell you what a cold, filtered coffee tastes like. I, I look... <laughs> I look at him and you know and you know how much I love Mark Murphy, but I look at a guy like Taranto and I think that is the Mark Murphy, you know, replacement right there. So let's break it down. Who is he? What's he doing? How does he fit? Talk to me about him. Well, last year was a bit of a, a poo year by Taranto. We know he had a massive injury. He came in late in the year. So obviously the numbers we're looking at at the moment are last year's stats. They're not great. But that helps us out because genuinely players are sold when you've got a GWS situation. And we seem to talk about GWS every trade period. But they can't keep signing players. They can't keep doing it. They can't keep re-signing. Now, a lot of talk is, is it Kelly? Is it Cameron who leaves? Is it five of their youngsters to make the salary cap space? This bloke signed on last year on a long deal. So that may be another avenue they go down. Because they look at him and think, well, you know what? We've got a few players now that are showing Taranto's potential. He's probably not as needed. Hopper does his job as well. So do we take a knock in a position we've got a lot of talent? Because we know Kelly and Cameron, they're replaceable. Particularly Cameron, key forwards are as rare as rocking horse poo in the AFL. And he can be really, really good. But you look at his career numbers... He is a pressure act specialist, rates elite, top 20 in the comp over the last five years for pressure acts, top 20 in the AFL for tackles resulting in turnovers, which we know last year we were one of the bottom two sides that tackles false turnovers. So this guy is a beast and he's added an element to his game in the last couple of years, which again is really rare. He averages just under half a goal per game as well. He's starting to become that goal-kicking mid. His score involvements are in the very good category as well. So he's not just a centre player. He also has the ability to impact around the ground. And he's a two-way player. His defensive numbers are just as good as his attacking numbers. And he's that core age. And you look, he actually had his hand in the last six games in score involvements that were linked up with Kelly. Now, you look at a player we've got who is basically Audi, Josh Kelly, and that is Sam Walsh. Sam Walsh looks to be now, with that goal-kicking array, to be what Kelly is. And I think he'll be superior to Kelly's numbers. He's got a great talent. So the thought of Taranto and, Kel and Walsh hooking up for 10 years with Cripper getting the ball out to him, Zach Williams on the other side, you're talking that is the best midfield in the comp from 2021 if you somehow acquire this player. Yeah, I mean, I mean the one thing about Taranto this year I noticed uh, I mean, you, you're right. He, he kicked a lot more, seemed to kick a lot more goals this year. And he played, he played out of position, if I'm honest. So I thought his first few games he played, he started forward, which makes sense because he was coming back off the shoulder reconstruction and, and uh, you know, Leon Cameron wanted to give him, you know, that time to settle in. But, and then he sort of eventually started to find his way back into the midfield. And, you know, he's a natural ball winner, a really good player. And I, I just... I think you're right. I think this is the, the window of opportunity to get someone like him whose value has maybe depreciated a little bit. You know, GWS did not have a good year. He didn't have a good year in terms of interrupted preseason and, and all of that. He, you know, his disposal efficiency was quite down this year and what we know he's capable of. And yeah, you look at the fact that they've got, they seem to have three or four players that play every week at the Giants who do the same thing. 
Uh, and so it's interesting. What would it, you know, what would it take to get someone like Taranto? Because he's obviously going to be touted very highly. Um, but on the flip side, this is, I guess, me playing devil's advocate. The thing with these Giants boys, they're so highly touted. They're all highly touted. And, you know, they've never really been in a situation where they've been doubted and criticised. Maybe this year that changed a little bit. But that's what I'm mindful of with Taranto because, we, I mean, I'm going to do it. You'll do it. Everyone will do it. Let's say he comes to Carlton. He gets put up on the pedestal, right? So you come into Carlton, you're a big-name player, you know, a star of the competition. You're going to be expected to really perform. So is that something we need to be mindful of with him? I, I think you look at this year, I think his dip is you look at his like where he's played, he's suffering from that midfield rotation that Liam Cameron likes. And he's deployed at half forward and he's been deployed at half back flank as well. He's really becoming like that Whitfield and Hopper. They all kind of rotate with Coggy. And I think for someone like Taranto, he's a player that wants to play on the ball 24-7. So for me, I don't see a problem because when you look at his on-ball numbers, they haven't really changed. But I think his disposal efficiency is kind of found out when he has got that long kick at half-back flank or when he is in the half-forward position. I don't think he's that versatile, like Kelly and your Canelio, I think he's just a predominant on-bowler. But when you put him next to Gripper, that on-ball pairing is fearful. Like, that is dangerous because you've got literally two beasts when they're on form. And look, we, we, we can say Williams is a lock to come to Carlton, pretty much. You have Williams there, Walsh on the outside. That, that is tearing sides up. Like, you wouldn't want to play it. And it's a tough matchup because who do you tag? And that's what we've got to remember. Who do you tag out the game? It's going to be hard to do. Yeah, no, fantastic. So how important is this one? And, and how realistic is this one? I think realism, it's going to, a lot will depend, I think, on Cameron. We know there was talk a month ago, Taranto has indicated to GWS he'd like to return to Melbourne. It's not a priority at this stage, but it's something he has declared to them that he, he's looking to come back home. And I think you'll see a lot of players with this COVID situation think, shit, I miss home. Do you know what I mean? I think this has actually made a lot of interstate players realise that, you know, Melbourne's a lifetime away, really. So a lot of them will start to have them creature comforts. I think it's going to be tough. It's going to, it's going to be a bit like the Lockie Hunter deal. They've got no reason to sell and they know it. The only reason they have to sell, though, is their salary cap. So if Cameron does re-sign, Kelly's out of contract next year, you would say that they have got a salary. They can't keep doing it with a salary cap. That if an offer came in that they couldn't refuse, a proper count and trade, I reckon you'd get it done. For me, priority rise, we have got the players to do his job at the moment. Satfield, kerner has got a few years left. It's not a priority, but I think if an opportunity arises and the price is right, I would put that priority to a 9 out of 10. If you suddenly get that down to a first and maybe that's it, that, that goes to a 9 and a 10 if you can get him for that value. Yeah. No, very good, mate. I'm excited about this one. He's got a chant ready for him. We won't sing it yet. Hopefully he comes and we can start singing it because I think he can be running down the wing easily. Um, but no, nah, that's been good. Thanks very much, Pom. And for you guys at home, what do you think of Tim Taranto? Interested, not interested, important, very important, not important? Let us know in the comments and uh, we'll chat about it then.